Are you still clinging on to your beloved DVD collection, even as streaming services dominate the entertainment landscape? Don't throw them out just yet, these little plastic discs are quite remarkable. They each have their own story to tell, and they do so through a process that most would describe as pure magic. Despite how revolutionary it was to watch the first movies on DVD in the 90s, the ability to store data on a disc has a rich history that stretches more than half a century. In the late 1960s, James T. Russell, an avid music enjoyer, was determined to create a system that would reproduce music more accurately than LP records and cassette tapes. In doing so, he patented the first optical sound recording system in 1970, allowing the world to adopt a more compact and authentic music listening experience in the form of the CD. Many companies experimented with optical storage following the invention of the laser, which was accelerated due to Russell's work. Just like how you can accelerate my work by clicking this hitchhiker button. By refining his design, we can now store music, movies, games, text, and even whole computer operating systems as data that can be accessed digitally from this thin optical disc. A DVD can be used for a wide variety of things, and the technology behind them can be used for even more. So how exactly does a DVD handle information? Unlike previous technology that stored analog sounds through magnetism or mechanical means, Optical discs use light from a laser to record and read back information digitally. When it comes to CDs, for example, the voltage levels of the source audio waves are measured thousands of times a second, and this measurement is turned into a zero or one, converting the original recording into a string of binary numbers through a process called sampling. To be more specific, the most common sampling rate is 44.1 kHz, which means that there are 44,100 measurements taken per second that get converted into bits. The more bits used to represent the measurements, the closer the audio can be to the original sound wave. Although not as simple as CDs, DVDs take this process to the next level with an image sensor and its photodiodes that convert light into electrical signals in a process known as the photoelectric effect. The measured voltage level is proportional to the intensity of the light, which means that if a color filter array is applied over the image sensor, each photodiode can capture the intensity for the primary colors. The result is that full-color images can be reconstructed by combining the intensity values of the red, green, and blue channels. The audio and video from a DVD can be reconstructed over and over and over and over and over and over for a long time when preserved under the right conditions. Manufacturers estimate that when a disc is handled and stored properly, it can be read for 30 to 100 years reliably. When it comes to being able to write to a disc, that's a different story. The first versions of optical discs were designed in a way that meant the consumer could only read the data and not write any data to the disc, which is actually what the ROM stands for in CD-ROM. This was because the process used to make the zeros and ones involved the laser permanently burning parts of the reflective aluminum surface to create pits where no light can be reflected. Since only some parts of the aluminum reflect the light and others don't, the disc has two different states that can represent zero or one. This process is done one time with some high-end equipment to create the master copy, which can be used to stamp out millions of duplicates. Add some protective polycarbonate on one end and some plastic on the other end for the label, and there you go. A disc that's ready to be used. When a disc is put into a player, the laser in the player will flash onto the shiny side of the disc, and as the disc is rotated by the player's motor, the light from the laser will be scattered by the pits and reflected by the flat areas into the player's own photoelectric cell which will then send an electric current to a circuit that generates the number 1 or 0. Now it could be easy to say that the pits on a disc equal 0 and the reflective parts, also called the land, equal 1. But in order to use space more effectively and minimize potentially unreadable bits, the encoding process is actually a little more clever. Instead of the laser reading individual pits and lands to return a 0 or 1, it only needs to read the changes between a land and a pit. This is referred to as non-return to zero inverted coding. As shown in the diagram, an unchanging status will return zero, but if the laser suddenly changes from pit to land, or land to pit, this is represented with a one. With this encoding trick, there will be fewer extremely short or extremely long sections of either state, which means that any damage to the aluminum layer will be less likely to cause significant reading problems. You could imagine that the lasers used to create these pits must be very precise in order to create such small indents in the disc, and you would be right. A CD player scans using infrared light, which has a wavelength of 780 nanometers. For some perspective, the width of a human hair is estimated to be 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers. 
If that wasn't impressive enough, a DVD can store up to seven times more information than a CD. How can that be if the discs are the same size? Well, DVDs are recorded and played back with a higher powered red laser, which only has a wavelength of 650 nanometers. This allows for even smaller pits and separation tracks. Taking this a step further, Blu-ray discs use a blue light with a wavelength of only 405 nanometers. This level of precision isn't just useful for watching your favorite movies. These tools have real application in the world of biotechnology. When it comes to nanoscale biology, labs often require bulky and expensive devices in order to achieve the level of precision needed to experiment in such a small environment. Hypothetically, using the lasers found in disk drives could be optimal and cost-efficient to this research. One such study surmised that the various lenses and lasers found in commercial optical pickup units could be used for bioimaging and even to manipulate red blood cells using the piconewtons of force exerted from the laser. In this figure, they demonstrated the ability of a DVD laser to trap and isolate cells by controlling the OPU with a standard off-the-shelf Arduino microcontroller. And in this figure, they demonstrated how a modified OPU was capable of imaging a cell stained with a toxin known as phalloidin. And in this figure, they demonstrated that the reliability and versatility of this technology is currently unmatched. Even in the age of online content, DVDs still have their place. The online model requires that all users have an internet connection and is dependent on servers being able to store and relay information. If you want to own that data yourself or do not always have a reliable connection, DVDs may better suit your needs. For example, on Microsoft's gaming console, the Xbox, licensing for the digital games works differently than the physical copies. For the digital copies, every game is given two licenses, one that's attached to an account and one that's attached to the specific unit that you play on. There are many additional end-user license agreements that factor into purchasing your games online, and in the event that the servers go down, you may no longer have access to those games. This problem exists for movies and music too. Relying on a subscription-based service for your music or movies may be more expensive than owning them on a disc. And because we're still in a transitional period between discs and the internet, many devices you own may still only be compatible with CDs or DVDs, like cars, TVs, or even something as minor as a karaoke machine. Don't let the physical nature of discs scare you away, though. If you want to enjoy your movie or music collection through an experience similar to Netflix, you can do it in a few steps. You can start by getting a DVD reader and converting your media into files using something like Make MKV. If you have a lot of discs, you might want to buy multiple disc readers so that you don't have to do this one at a time. If you're really serious about this, you could even try this automatic ripping machine project from GitHub. There's a Docker version, so hypothetically you could get it to run under Docker Desktop on Windows, but you may just have an easier time with running the script on Ubuntu. If you don't have a Linux computer lying around, you could make a virtual machine and try giving it access to the DVD reader. Once all your media is in a file format, you could just stop here and organize it into folders on your computer. That could take up a lot of space though, and it wouldn't be as convenient to access. You probably want a dedicated hard drive for this stuff, and you can take this a step further by having a small computer to act as your home server. This can be as complicated as building a home server from scratch and personally installing and maintaining everything, or just buying the cheapest box from Synology and slotting a new hard drive into the drive bay. If you just want this to be easy, you can get a 1 bay NAS and a 4 terabyte hard drive for under 200 USD, and that would be all you need. From there, you could download the Plex app and start uploading the files you ripped to your home server to be consumed in a Netflix-like format from any device, including your smart TV. You will never have to worry about Netflix pulling your favorite shows or movies from their catalog, and you won't have to go through the account sharing BS that the executive somehow thought was a good idea. Nor do you actually have to pay a subscription fee. And as a bonus, you have a backup if for some reason something ever happens to your DVDs. In many ways, optical discs are the last bastion of freedom from our corporate overlords. Their impressive use cases and physical nature not only make them ideal for keeping the subscription service nonsense at bay, but demonstrate how technology takes advantage of the physics and properties of the world around us. And I think that's pretty cool. Good job, DVDs. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.